The Romance of the Ranchos. Los Angeles, 1836. Citizens fight mission over water rights. Owens Valley, 1908. World's greatest aqueduct system started. Colorado River, 1936. Fight to save Mighty Dam Project. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the march of events which founded our Southern California of today. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns with another colorful and dramatic true story from the days of the domes. Most of us paid a larger income tax last Monday than we ever paid before. And yet probably none of us ever paid a tax so gladly. For we know that much of it will go to pay for weapons and supplies that our armed forces will use against the enemies of our country. But even these new higher taxes are not enough to meet vital war needs. In a matter of months, we must equip ourselves to conquer enemies who have been arming themselves for years. We can do this through our purchases of defense bonds and stamps. This money will come back to us later with substantial interest. So it's an investment in our own financial future as well as in democracy. But the need now is urgent, so buy a defense bond tomorrow. And now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Tonight our story is probably the most important story to each and every one of us of all the events we have presented on this series of programs. For it is the story of how a parched semi-desert area was turned into a garden land for over three million persons, their homes, farms, and cities. It could never have been done without water. This is indeed a thrilling chapter in The Romance of the Ranchos. <laughs> According to legend, when the prophet Mahomet was asked what was the greatest act of charity, the desert camel driver replied, to bring water to men. But more than charity, the bringing of water to Southern California was a necessity. For life in this semi-arid valley would be impossible for large numbers of people without an adequate source of precious water. And so water was the first consideration of the Spaniards who traveled north from Mexico, looking for possible sites for missions and pueblos. They marked the site of Los Angeles as a possibility because of the Los Angeles River, which they called Rio Pocincula. And a few years later, in 1781, 11 families of settlers built their homes around the old plaza. Their first consideration was water. Huh. And they call this a river. See, si, of course it is a river. Only well, a brook, perhaps. A very small stream, perhaps. A tiny rivulet, perhaps. But a river? Huh. Never. Look at it. A sick little trickle, meandering along through an ocean of sand. Is that a river? Si, it is. The Rio Porciuncula. Uh, there is more to it than it looks like. For under the sand and gravel, a fine river flows. Huh? Under the sand? Under the ground? Si. Most of the water in this river is under the ground, seeping along through the sand. I never heard of such a thing. It's fantastic. But it is true. Dig a hole in the sand there and you shall see. You shall strike water. Lots of it. Oh, I shall believe it when I see it. Oh, very well. Be stupid if you wish, but do not be slow. Come, dip your oil into the water and we shall be getting back to the Pueblo. And that is another thing. What is another thing? About this river. It is too far from the Pueblo. Here we have to carry our ollas full of water a thousand varas to our houses. It's too far. Oh, you think we should move the river closer? Move the river? Oh, you stupid loco, of course not. We should move the Pueblo closer to the river. Oh, and you are just as loco. Pick up all our houses and move them? Besides, you want your house to be swept away when the floodwaters come? 
Oh, see, si, that's right. I had not thought. You never think, mi amigo. Why do you suppose we built our houses on the high ground as we did? To escape the floods, of course. Now, if we want the water closer, we must move the river to the Puerto. Well, that is crazy. It does not make sense. How can you just pick up a river and move it? By building a toma, a dam across the river, and running part of the water into a zaha, a ditch to bring the water right up to the plaza. Oh, see, si, it could be done, couldn't it? See, si, it could be done, couldn't it? Of course it can be done. Already the plans are being made, and the Indians will start work within a few days. <laughs> Those early Angelinos built what they called Madre Zanja, or Mother Ditch, which brought the river water to within a stone's throw of the plaza. From there, it was carried to the various homes by the first employee of the Los Angeles Water Department, an Indian woman. She carried the heavy jars full of water on her head. But as the population grew, and with it the water system, improvements were made. And in the city council... But, senores, I object. This item of the budget is entirely out of line. I cannot let it stand. Which item, Senor Alcalde? Why, this. You have recommended that the pay of the Zanjero be doubled. See, si, that is right. Yes, yeah, but that brings his salary to a fantastic sum more than mine. See, si, that is right. But, senores, am not I the Alcalde of the Pueblo more important than a mere tender of the dishes? Well, no, Senor no, Alcalde. What? What, what do you mean? The Zanjero has the most important job in the Pueblo. Now that we have many branch Zahas leading off to the outlying parts of the Pueblo, there is constant work to guard them, to keep them clean and in good repair. Without the Zanjero, we have no Zahas. Without the Zahas, we have no water. Without water, well, senor, we have nothing. See, I know all this. But a salary bigger than mine. I suppose next you shall want to pay the Americano who drives that rickety water wagon more than me. Oh, there is no need for that, senor alcalde. Already, from the weekly fees the people pay him for his water, he makes more than you do. And it is humiliating. I resign. Slowly, more improvements were added. In the early 1820s, Joseph Chapman, the American who had once been a crew member of the privateer Bouchard, constructed the Southland's first water wheel at the Mission San Gabriel. This was an almost magical thing to the early Californians. But soon, other water wheels were being made for mills, and the age of power was at hand. But it was still a thing of wonder to the Angelinos when, one day, they saw a strange sight on the river. I have seen many things which are strange, but this, this I cannot understand. It's very simple, mi amigo. It is a wheel. Well, I can see that it looks like a wheel. It goes round and round, but there is no oxen pulling it. And it stands on the same spot without moving across the ground. But it is a water wheel. The force of the water moving downstream turns it around. You see? And it is not supposed to move from that spot. Well, it is all very strange. But tell me, what is it for? Look, you see the buckets on each paddle of the wheel? See, si, I see them. You see that as the wheel goes around, the buckets dip into the water, fill themselves, and are carried up to the top. There, you see? They are emptied onto the wooden chute and presto. The river is lifted 20 feet into the air. Now that whole hillside up there can have water for irrigation. You mean this thing lifts the river right up to the hill? See, I have said it. Well, what will they think of next? When the Pueblo of Los Angeles had first been founded, the waters of the Posiuncula, or Los Angeles River, were ample for the needs of its population. Hence the proclamation of the King of Spain, giving them the right to those waters forever, meant little to them. But as time went on and the population grew steadily, it became more and more important that the young city have exclusive use of the river. And so considerable excitement was aroused when, in 1836, word was received... See, it is so. I have seen it with my own eyes. The padres of the Mission San Fernando have built a dam across one of the springs, which are the source of the river. They have cut off a great quantity of our water, and they must be stopped. The excited authorities went to the governor. And before long, they were able to approach the padres of the mission. Whoa, whoa! Oh, senor, welcome to Mission San Fernando. Gracias, padre. You know me, no doubt. I am the alcalde of the si, pueblo. of the pueblo de Los Angeles, senor. Si. You have had a long journey. You will come inside where it is cool and rest. Have a glass of vino? No, gracias. I come on business. 
You are in charge here? See, I am. Then I must ask you to break the dam which you have constructed across the mountain spring. Break it, senor, and why? You know that the spring is the source of the city's river. You have no right to stop its flow. But isn't there some question? No, there is not. If the proclamation of the king of Spain is not enough, then this order from the government of Mexico will be. You shall not impede the flow of the river again, for the rights to its waters are all invested in the people of the Pueblo and always will be. But the rights to the water of the Los Angeles River were lost to the people for a time. For after the Americans came and the population jumped to undreamed-of proportions, the old Zanja system was proving inadequate and something had to be done. So, in 1868, the city fathers made a decision. But, gentlemen, do you see what you're doing? You're giving away to a private individual the most precious right we of Los Angeles have, our most valuable asset. You're not being fair to the citizens of the city. We're not giving anything away, my friend. Right. We're merely leasing the water and the water system to a company who will put in improvements. Why not put them in ourselves? Because we haven't got the money. Besides, they can probably do it better than we can. I doubt it. Oh. Gentlemen, I feel sure that you'll regret this decision. Before the 30 years of this lease are passed, you'll regret it. So, in 1868, the precious water control passed from the hands of the people of Los Angeles for a period of 30 years. Soon, the city water company was putting in a pipe system to replace the old Zanjas. Wooden pipes which, when heated by the summer sun, often burst open and sprayed water over the streets. Later, they built the first reservoir in Elysian Hills, the Buena Vista Reservoir. And about that time, a young Irish immigrant arrived in Los Angeles and got a job as a Zanjero, helping to install the new pipes. It wasn't a big job, but as is often the case, this young man was destined to rise from it to great heights. One day, soon after he started to work, he was digging in a ditch. Hey there, Bill. Slow up. What are you trying to do? Dig this ditch all by yourself? Whew. I, I guess I have been going at it, haven't I? I'll say you have. you got more energy than all the rest of us put together. Oh, it's not that so much. It's, I just got a rule I stick to. When it's time to work, work hard. When the whistle blows, go home and forget all about work. Relax and have a good time. Enjoy life. Well, it sounds all right, but you'll wear yourself out working the way you do. No, I don't think so. I won't say hard work never hurt anybody, but I will say it does most people good. Oh, and speaking of that, it's still time for work. So pardon me, I got a ditch to dig. All right, all right, I'll take the hint. But if you don't wear yourself out, you're going to wear me out trying to keep up with you. There, there, young fella. You that's throwing dirt out of that ditch so fast. Who are you talking to, me? Yes, you. I've never seen anybody shovel so fast before. You'll wear yourself out. Oh, you let me worry about that, mister. Now, get on with you. Can't you see you're interfering with important work? What's that? I'm interfering with important work. That's what I said. Now, if you haven't got anything better to do than come around bothering busy people, we have. We're bringing water to the thirsty people. So get on with you. Say, who are you, anyway? What difference does that make to you? You tend to your business and let me tend to mine. Well, well all right, sir. I'll tend to my business. Oh, uh, step over here, young man. Oh, who, me, sir? That's right. Now, uh, will you tell this energetic chap who I am? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Bill, huh? he's the president of the water company, our boss. Uh-oh. Well? Here, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I want to get my coat and then in to pick up my check. Oh, no, you're not. You stay right here. You're not quitting. Anybody who thinks that much of bringing water to thirsty people. Well, you mean you're not going to fire me? Fire you? <laughs> I should say not. I'm going to make you a foreman. But I... Yes, and I'm going to have to watch you carefully or you'll have my job before long. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, what is your name? Why, uh, it's William Mulholland, sir. <laughs> Matters affecting land ownership consist of more than recorded documents relating to particular properties. For example, while a deed may convey title to a lot, the legal bankruptcy of the owner of the lot would transfer its ownership just as effectively. There are many other matters relating to persons rather than to individual pieces of property which also affect land ownership. Among them are judgments, powers of attorney, insanity commitments, guardianships and probate proceedings, divorce actions, and property settlements. Therefore, to protect you when you invest in real property, the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles must go even beyond its great system of indexing records having to do with every foot of land 
in the county. It must also keep records of matters affecting persons, whether or not they own property at the time these matters arise. These personal records, kept in a separate set of books called the General Index, contain at present more than a million and a half different names. Against each of these names are entered facts, such as those that I have just mentioned, judgments, bankruptcies, divorces, and so forth. Before the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles issues a policy of title insurance for your protection, these records are checked to make sure that the person whose land you're acquiring has not been or is no longer involved in any such difficulty or legal proceeding which might cloud the title that he or she is transferring to you. Little did the president of the City Water Company realize that day when he raised William Mulholland from ditch tender to foreman that here was a man destined for great things. But the young man began his climb quickly. Before many years had passed, he was the manager of the company. Through his efforts, the water system was expanded to meet the needs of an ever-growing population. Then, in 1898, the 30-year lease of the private company was up. And the people of Los Angeles attempted to get the rights to their water back. But the company which had invested so much in the system fought to keep their franchise. For four years, the fight continued. Finally, in an effort to place an accurate valuation on the system, a commission was appointed, and it came to see William Mulholland. These are all the records you have on the physical aspects of the water system, Mr. Mulholland? Yes, there they all are. Well, they're not very complete. I'm afraid we'll have to have more than this to be able to place a valuation on the plant. I'm sure you will, but I can tell you whatever you want to know. I trust my memory a lot more than I do any records. But, Mr. Mulholland, I'm afraid oh, that you... you... don't think I remember every piece of pipe and how old it is? Every fitting, every hydrant, every gate valve? Frankly, no, Mr. Mulholland. I don't see how any man could. You have 325 miles of pipe here. All right. Well, get out a map of the city and I'll show you. I'll give you a complete inventory of what we have, from memory. All right. But you surely realize we'll have to check up on you. <laughs> That's all right with me. I'll give you the inventory, and then you mark the points you want checked. I'll have them dug up and show you that I'm right. That's fair enough. If those points check all right, then we'll accept the rest of your inventory and congratulate you on a wonderful memory. William Mulholland was right. At every checkpoint, the engineers found his memory completely accurate and so accepted his mental inventory of the stock of the company. They placed the value of the waterworks at close to $1 million. The company claimed $3 million, so they arrived at the compromise of $2 million. The voters of Los Angeles cast a huge majority for the necessary bonds. And once more, the people of Los Angeles owned their own water system. And then, during William Mulholland's last days as manager of the city water company, he received a visitor. Well, George, are you fellows on the new commission ready to take over? Yes, Bill, we're all set up. Everything's ready to go. I want to thank you for rehiring all of the men who have worked here with us. It was fine of you. Well, there's nothing noble about that. They're the best, most experienced men we could find. Now all we need is a manager for the system. A manager? Yes. Uh, you don't happen to know somebody you could recommend, do you? Well, any of the boys in the department would... No, I'm afraid just any of the boys wouldn't do. You see, the commission has its heart set on a certain fellow, but we're not sure he'd be interested. Oh, well, I should think any man would be interested in a job like that. You do? I'm glad to hear you say that. In that case, Mr. Manager, what are your plans for the department? Uh, George, you mean me? <laughs> Why not? Hasn't this water system been your whole interest for years? Haven't you been responsible for its success so far? Why, Bill, we couldn't any more do without you than we could do without water. Will you stay? Will I stay? You said it yourself. My whole interest is here. Of course I'll stay. And you asked about plans, I have them too. George, we have to get more water. Los Angeles is growing fast, amazingly fast. But it can't grow much larger or develop much industry unless we get more water. You're right. The river supply is going to be inadequate before very long, especially if we have any more drought. But where are we going to get more water? Why, up in Owens Valley. There's plenty of pure, fresh water up there. Are you crazy, Bill? That's 250 miles away. Doesn't matter. We'll bring it down here. We'll build an aqueduct. But that's almost impossible. It would be the biggest engineering project ever attempted. All right, it's worth it. Well, Los Angeles is going to be the biggest town on the West. Maybe in the country before she's through. The 
So, in 1907, the city of Los Angeles embarked on the greatest engineering project ever attempted up to then. A 225-mile aqueduct costing $25 million and planned to bring water enough to serve 2 million people. Five years it took to build. Five years of hard, back-breaking work, digging, tunneling, cutting through desert sands and rocky mountains. Every day, new problems of engineering faced the directors of the project. For instance, it was the Antelope Valley siphon. But, Mr. Mulholland, if you try to siphon up that distance over the mountain with a pipe 12 feet in diameter and miles long, you'll never make it. It just won't work. Why not? Why? Well, when you pump the air out of it, it's going to collapse. And a million dollars will be shot. No, I don't think so. We'll try it. All right, Mr. Mulholland. Maybe you were right. All the air pumped out? Almost. In just a minute. Wait. Look. Good Lord, it's collapsing. Look, just as I said, that steel pipe. Collapsing like tissue paper. There it is, Mr. Mulholland. Months of work and a million dollars ruined. No, I don't think so. What? Turn the water into it. What? Why? I said turn the water into it. Unless I'm completely wrong, the pressure of the water will fill it right back out again. Go ahead. Try it. And he was right. Antelope Valley siphon stood up. The chief's revolutionary engineering ideas saved the day many times. And so it was a sort of a personal triumph. That day in 1913, William Mulholland stood with a crowd in San Fernando Valley and watched the first water come tumbling down from his aqueduct into the reservoir. (laughs) Mr. Mulholland, what a great day. Won't you say something to the crowd? No, no, thank you. But everyone's made speeches but you, and you're the one they want to hear. Oh, come on, just a short one. Oh, all right, all right. Quiet, quiet, please, please, quiet. Quiet. Here's Mr. Mulholland to say something. Quiet, please, please. All right, sir. Well, all I want to say is we all wanted water. We went a long way to get it. And now, there it is. Take it. Now, Los Angeles had water. Water for two million people. And hand in hand with water went power. Electricity. For great city-owned power plants were built along the aqueduct. But as the years went on, Southern California experienced a growth which amazed the entire world. Soon it was apparent that even this great supply of water and power was not enough for the needs of the future. And once again, William Mulholland and his associates took the lead in planning new torrents of the precious liquid. The Mono Basin Project was added to the aqueduct. In the meantime, two giant water development projects were underway on the Colorado River. The greatest engineering projects ever envisioned by man. Boulder Dam was built by the federal government to control and conserve the floodwaters of the mighty Colorado and to provide a great power reserve for the Southland. At the same time, there was set underway the construction of the Colorado River Aqueduct, the longest and largest domestic water supply system in the United States. To finance and build this huge aqueduct, Los Angeles joined forces with 12 other neighboring cities and formed the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. In order to divert Colorado River water into the aqueduct, it was necessary to build Parker Dam. Several times during the years this dam was building, disaster threatened. Hurry up, men. Roll those trucks. Pile on more rock and dirt and pass. Water's coming up two feet an hour. Hurry up. It'll go over the top any minute. Mister, can I help? I was just passing by. What's the trouble? Trouble? Brother, if the flood water gets up over this coffer dam, it'll ruin two years of work and about $10 million. Good look. How? Well, you see, this coffer dam is diverting the flow of the river while we build Parker Dam down below there. The deepest dam in the world. And right now, it's just a big hole in the ground, 200 feet deep. 200 feet deep? Sure, down to bedrock. When this flood water gets through, it'll fill that hole up in no time. Holy smokes. Can I help? Yes. You can help by keeping out of the way of those rock trucks. I think they'll do the job. And they did. Another flash flood on the Colorado River had been whipped. Parker Dam was finished, the deepest dam in the world, 320 feet high and only 80 feet of it visible. Above the dam, the aqueduct's huge intake pumping plant was built and clear across the state of California, 392 miles from the Colorado River to the sea, stretched a great aqueduct capable of supplying 7,500,000 people's needs. Through 108 miles of tunnels, 
across burning desert lands, up and over and around towering peaks. And in November 1939, deep in the heart of 10,000-foot San Jacinto Mountain, a dynamite charge blasted through the last 10 feet of solid rock. There she is. The tunnel's through. At last, the aqueduct is through. From the Colorado to the cities of Southern California. After eight years of work, the world's greatest engineering project was finished, and a plentiful supply of life-giving water was assured for many years to come for all Southern California. Water for homes, water for industry, water for the irrigation which has changed the Southland from a dry, dusty plain to one of the most fertile, productive garden spots in the world. And among many men who deserve the praise for these achievements, one man stands out, William Mulholland. He did not live to see the great project completed to see a great boulder dam or Parker Dam rise, or the great aqueduct pouring the water which was his life into the country he loved. But the people of Los Angeles remembered his part, and by popular subscription, they raised a beautiful memorial fountain to his memory. It stands on the spot of Los Feliz Boulevard and Riverside Drive, where William Mulholland lived in a humble cabin when he was a ditch tender for the first water company. Such is the story of progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. Frank Graham will be back in a moment for a word about next week's story. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is happy to present for your enjoyment stories such as the one tonight, highlighting the history of the development of water for Southern California. For water made possible the growth and progress of our community, and thus made possible the development of the Title Insurance and Trust Company to the point where it is today the largest issuer of title insurance protection in the world. The next time you drive by the Mulholland Memorial Fountain at Los Feliz and Riverside Drive, picture his early day cabin there, and the spot will hold a new and inspiring significance for you. And when you see from the highway beyond San Fernando a section of the Owens Valley Aqueduct, your knowledge of its thrilling history will lend new interest to the familiar site. In thus adding to the enjoyment that we all have in living in Southern California lies the element of service that the Title Insurance and Trust Company hopes to render through these broadcasts. And now, what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, Bob, we'll open an exciting chapter in the history of early California. We'll tell you the adventurous story of one of the most notorious bandits of early days, the renegade Joaquin Murrieta. It's a chilling, thrilling, true story I know you'll want to hear. So until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Gaylord Carter. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.